Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma and in this video we'll be talking about how can you answer a DSA question in a coding interview. This is part 3 of the series in which I talk about DSA and how can you prepare for your coding interviews. With me I'm joined with Yajas, he is a software engineering intern at Microsoft. Yajas, how are you there bro? I'm doing amazing as well. How are you Ishan? How's Bangalore? I'm doing well, Bangalore is great, I'm just setting up my studio, as you can see it's not the best, I'm trying to improve. So let's talk about this particular topic, right? How can someone answer a DSA a question in an interview according to you? What is the best way to do that? Okay, uh, so firstly, uh, a lot of you might be thinking that once you have studied DSA, then the interview mein question to answer kar hi denge. Then why are we even talking about this topic? So this is something that I have observed over the past years with my seniors, with my fellow pre people who are preparing for companies. What happens is that people can do a thousand questions, two thousand questions, do competitive programming. But ultimately, if you are not able to explain your question in an interview, you can't tell the interviewer that you can't show your preparation. You can't tell what's going in your mind. Then there isn't a point of even preparing for two years. Ultimately, if we don't have our points in the interview, mein, then we have solved DSA questions or even now we have solved the interview mein questions in the interview, there is no point in it. Therefore, we must also prepare for answering questions in an interview. So I'll just try to cover what all things should you, that you should keep in mind. Uh, first is cross-questioning. So let's say you are in an interview and the interviewer has explained you a question, samjhaya, ek question bataya hai. Do you directly jump into your solution? No. You first cross question the interviewer and understand if you have firstly you verify that if, if you if you have understood the question correctly, because the last thing that you want to do is misinterpret the question and solve the wrong question in an interview. Secondly, ask about edge cases. Can there be an empty string? Can there be a null pointer? Can there be zero nodes? What this shows is that it shows that you are thinking analytically on your feet. Whenever you are given a question, you think about edge cases because ultimately in, in a company, in real world scenarios, there will be a lot of edge cases. So cross questioning is important. A big confusion you might have is to find the right DSA course that suits for you. Well, in that case, you can check out Coding Ninja's DSA course in C++ for completely free using their try free option on the course page. You get access to 20% of the course for completely free. The course is in Hindi and you can avail the one-on-one -on -one doubt TA support in which all of your doubts will get resolved in less than 45 minutes using the try free feature on the page. The faculty is from Stanford and IIT and they also have a 4.9 star rating on Google and Facebook reviews. The structure of this course is very well suited for college students and you can also check out Coding Ninja's other courses that take you from the very basics to advanced concepts in programming, be it web development, Android development. They also have launched their recent course in data analytics that you can have a look at. If you like their courses, you can opt to buy any of them using the link in the description and get a 15% discount above the early bird offer. So go check out the courses and let's move on with the video. Second, don't jump directly into code. When you think that you have understood your question, don't directly start writing code. First, take a minute or two to gather your thoughts. Think about your intuition. Think about the algorithm that you want to use. Think about the flow that you want to follow and then start explaining that flow to the interviewer. Ultimately, the interview is to gauge how you think. It's to understand how you approach a problem. It's just not to review your code because a lot of people can write code. So your first responsibility is to bounce off ideas, is to tell the interviewer what's going on in your mind. And the second part of this is that there can be cases where the question doesn't come. Solve karna bilkul nahi aata hai, you don't know the solution. What happens then? Even then, after a minute or two, start bouncing off ideas. If you have practiced enough, whenever you see a question, You'll think of a data structure, you'll think of constraints, you'll think of an algorithm. Start bouncing off ideas. More often than not, even the interviewer will give you tips. The interviewer will give you hints. They'll tell you if you are thinking in the right direction. So that's the best way to, if you are blocked in an interview, just start bouncing off ideas and the interviewer will help you get out. So the first was cross question. The second was don't jump directly into the code. This is the first two things that you keep in mind while explaining a question. Yeah. Right. By the way, yeah, 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 just what was your experience like when you were, you know, going through the interview rounds in Microsoft, if you can talk about that here. Sure. So uh, I'll be very honest. Uh, I have given a decent amount of DSA interviews in general as well. 
specifically like i obviously can't go into the specifics of my interview at microsoft right. but in general what happened with me is that i was not very sure about my solution i wa- i was very very stuck because the kind of question that i was asked was very very close to real world and it was not a typical dsa question and therefore i had to really just bounce off ideas and seek hints from the interviewer but what i did not do is that directly tell the interviewer that i can't solve this can you give me hints i never used the word hint in the interview i just kept bouncing off ideas that were coming to my mind doing a dfs on some ideas let's say i have to pick a particular intuition i would just go deeper into that intuition until i landed on something which was very close to the solution and that's where my interviewer as well was more than happy to guide me through it right awesome bro what are some clean code practices that one can follow when they are trying to attempt a question in an interview right so now that we have understood the question now that we have explained our approach to the interviewer and the interviewer feels that we are ready to code that's where clean code comes in ultimately when you work in a company you write something that is understandable to others because you are using version control systems you are writing code which will be work you are basically collaborating on code with a lot of developers so it's important that you write code in a manner which will be understandable to other people and that's where clean code comes in so even in interviews interviewers expect you to write clean code now everyone says that write clean code write clean code but what is clean code and how do we go about it see these are very basic things firstly r- use meaningful variable names so let's say you are taking a variable which is an iterator from the starting of a linked list to the end of a linked list mm-hmm. so maybe name that itr instead of temp use variable names like start end count and avoid using names like x y z temp right. or I'll just avoid all these practices second when you name functions your function name should tell what the function is doing so let's say the function is checking if the if your solution is valid the function should be called bool is valid so your function should be very your function name should be self explanatory in nature the third part is writing comments in clean code so whenever wherever in your code there is business logic involved let's say you are traversing an array from the reverse from the end or you are reversing a linked list mention why are you doing so let's say you are sol- you are sorting an array on a custom basis mention that custom basis if you are using a dummy pointer mention in the comments why are you using a dummy pointer so that it shows that firstly there is a lot of clarity on your in your head about your code and secondly it just shows that you know how to write clean code so yeah mm-hmm. totally agree with you bro uh, lastly what is the right way that someone should take feedback in an interview because that is also a very important aspect of you know coming to a conclusion trying to solve a problem sure so uh, this has happened to me twice actually so when at the end of the interview uh, i asked the interviewer if they have anything that i should improve in future rounds or for rounds of other interviews in my life they were like and i when i asked for feedback in the end one thing that they mentioned was that they really loved how i incorporated feedback during the interview and before appearing for interviews i did not even know that this can be a metric so what is happening is that a lot of companies are shifting to a learn it all approach they are not looking for people who know everything they are looking for people who can learn on the job who can learn on the go and incorporate feedback every day and right. therefore they gauge this sim- this particular skill in an interview as well mm-hmm. so let's say you are explaining a solution and your interviewer thinks that there can be a better solution and they give you a hint towards it so you have to have a yes first approach to all these things when the interviewer tells you that there can be a better approach and use this try to use that first be very open to feedback be very open to incorporating feedback in an interview you just don't have to listen to feedback you have to incorporate it on the go so let's say you have been told a new approach try that approach right now try that approach during the interview and even if you are not able to succeed with that approach at least the interview will see that you made an effort and respected what the interviewer said right. the second part of it comes while writing code so when you are writing code in inter- inter- interviews it's very important that you don't follow such an approach that you are just writing code for 10 minutes and then you explain it in the end you have to be verbal while writing code let's say you write two lines explain those two lines wherever you are writing in the comments even explain that verbally mm-hmm. this will show clarity of thought 
and this will help you debug errors on the go and at the same time when you will be explaining your things it will give an int the interviewer an opportunity to give you active feedback so when you are writing code let's say the interviewer says that why are you using three variables when this can be done with two ba- think of how it can be done with two back backspace right away and start doing it with two variables don't wait for the end for the code to end and then incorporate those changes do it in real time show that you are very very open to feedback show that you have the ability to take feedback in real time and so what ta- what incorporating feedback in real time will also show is that you are confident about writing code so if you are some so if you are someone who can incorporate feedback in real time it will show that apne code rata nahi hai you are not someone jo bfs dfs ka code rat ke aa gaya you have understood mm-hmm. the code and just mm-hmm. because you have understood the code you are being able to incorporate changes mm-hmm. so to summarize it incorporate changes while explaining explaining code incorporate changes while in explaining your solution and at the end as well when you are asking questions feel more than free or more than encouraged to ask for feedback don't ask things like ye job mujhe milegi ya nahi but <laughs> ask it in a polite manner that this is my first, this is one of my initial tech interviews uh, how do you think should i i can improve in in, in a particular domain you are more than welcome to ask such questions and listen to such feedback with a smile on your face and the interviewer will be more than happy to give you feedback amazing bro thank you so much for joining me here and sharing your learnings about how people can attempt a coding interview and i wish you all the best for your work at microsoft thanks a lot thanks a lot awesome guys that was a video please make sure that you attempt and try your best for your coding interviews you can make a list of all the things that you learned from this video and implement that all the best share this video with your friends hit the like button and subscribe you can tag me on instagram at ishan sharma 3390 you can also tag yajas on twitter and you can follow him there as well i'll see you all in the next video